Hi everyone and welcome to the Open Active Adoption and Engagement Forum on the 24th of July uh, 2024. Great to see you all here. Uh, start with the usual reminder that if you are not already on our Slack workspace, um, if either if you're here or if you're um, uh, watching the catch up on YouTube, then please do join if you're not there already. Um, really good place to keep up to date with everything going on in Open Active and uh, communicate and collaborate with, with other people in the community. Um, we've got a slightly different uh, agenda today and we're hosting this as a quite a kind of informal drop in session um, for people to uh, talk about um, different things that they're working on, uh, to ask questions and, um, you know, ask about support if there's anything you need support with in terms of implementing Open Active. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a free for all, but um, maybe if we start with the usual round of introductions and, and then we can kick off from there. So if I start, my name is Tim Corby. I work for the Open Data Institute and we are we are funded by Sport England to steward the Open Active initiative. Um, and so that's uh, partly why we're here today and chairing this meeting. And um, so I'll go to my other colleagues at the ODI first. So, Darren, if we come to you. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Darren Tabble. I'm a consultant at the ODI. And I'm here supporting Open Active with a tech hat on. Over Great. to Andrew. Great, thanks, Darren. Andrew? Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Newman. I'm a Principal Data Specialist at ODI. Um, and uh, apologies if I'm camera off today. I'm just out and about. Uh, and it's my plan has failed because it started to rain. So I can't sit in the park and join the meeting. So I'm out to find somewhere else. <laughs> Good improvisation. Uh, Yasmin. Hi, I'm Yasmin. Uh, I work at Active Killer Medway and I lead on the Activity Finder for our local area. Brilliant. Thanks, Yasmin. Uh, Grace? Hi, yeah, I'm Grace. I work for Somerset Activity and Sports Partnership as their Open Data Project Officer and I also lead on the Activity Finder and Open Data for SAS. Great. Thanks, Grace. I really like your uh, branded background. That looks great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul? Hi, I'm Paul. I am the Marcoms Manager at Active Lincolnshire um, and then oversee our Activity Finder work on Let's Move Lincolnshire. Brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Uh, Tom. Hey, everyone. Tom Marley from Played, and we are a discovery and booking platform powered by Open Data. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. And Emma and Jules. Uh, I'm Emma Gooch. I'm the Data and Insight Manager at Yorkshire Sport Foundation, and I lead on all things, I guess, data, digital, and open data. Um, so, yeah. I'm Jules. I'm comms and generally trouble. <laughs> you said it, not us. Um, brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Really good to see you all. Uh, so, yeah, I think I will stop sharing now. And my screen and then as I say it's a bit of an experiment we've not done this before so I'm not sure how it's going to gonna go but we're um hosting today as, as I say a bit of a kind of drop-in or um free free form discussion and um, to to allow people to you know raise things ask questions all of that kind of stuff um I think Emma you had a couple of things you were going to talk about but I don't want to put you on the spot if you <laughs> If you uh, had second thoughts. annual haircut, yes, well spotted. Uh, but yes, should I come to you first, Emma, or are you? Uh, no, are you, you, you can do. Sorry, I'm taking grief from Jules because we've got a branded background like you have at SASP, and um, he's just gone. Where's ours? And yeah, so that, that's what that little uh, little aside was. So I, I told him I didn't know we had one. Um, yeah, I guess Tim and I have talked a little bit about this in the past, and I thought, I think you kind of said, could we just talk a little bit about where we're up to with um, open data and kind of what we're doing, but also some of the challenges that we've faced um, in the last year or so. Um, I guess we've had, an, we've had an activity finder for a really long time on our website, um, powered by Sports Suite. Um, we've kind of been part of these open active conversations for, for quite a while. Um, dating right back to kind of nine years, there you go. Uh, Glamorous Assistant helps me out here. Dating right back to um, kind of the original Open Active Champions, I think they were called. Um, and we kind of hit the point a couple of years ago where we were like, actually, if you are, what is the purpose of an activity finder? And if you are an inactive person uh, looking for, yeah, 
who are the kind of aim of the people that we want to use the activity finder for all of the will in the world you are not going to one day suddenly wake up and decide that you want to find Yorkshire Sport Foundation's website find our activity finder and decide that you want to start doing physical activity that's not really going to be the way that that works so we were like well how do we better utilize open data to make sure that it is reaching people in the communities that we want to um, be able to have access to this this range of data and, and these resources and coupled with that i sat in quite a few uh, learning action sets in various communities which was basically um discussing kind of some of the findings of some of the community work that we were doing with the local community and a lot of the feedback from that was things around wouldn't it be great if we just knew all of the activity that was going on and that we could um, use that to share with people and I'm thinking gosh we've got a solution in one place and we've got the question in another is there a way that we can kind of bring bring these two things together and we decided that we would look um, look for an activity finder uh, that allowed us to do more with kind of the widget function and embed activity finder widgets in local community websites so be that the local school and i know play wasted some testing with some of the school stuff when we first started looking at this um, but be that the local school be that the community center be that the library so that somebody that's inactive in one of our communities might decide that they're lonely and they want to do some kind of activity or meet somebody or find something that's going on in their community might go to their local community hub page or Facebook page or whatever and then be able to find the activity finder that way um, so that they can get active and then they end up accidentally being active or doing walking football which is you know an added benefit in reaching a group of people that definitely would never search for Yorkshire Sport Foundation and um, so we looked a little bit at how we might might make that work and um, we started probably a little bit too a little bit too top down in that we were trying to get um, people within the districts to open their data and do all of these things and it ended up at the point where we were like right I will look at a, a community we'll, we'll use Maltby as an example I will look at Maltby and I'll see what activity there is in Maltby with even with all of the work we've done trying to get people to open their data I think the nearest activity in Maltby was still maybe a 15 mile radius away from the center of Maltby and we were like right that's that's not going to work for the people in, in that community so we took a step back and we decided to take a much more targeted kind of community approach and we picked uh four which is now slightly grown into five um communities to do some of that work in Maltby was one of them um there's an area in in Bradford that we're doing some work with living well who are um uh, sat within Bradford uh, Birkby and in Kirklees and then Airedale which has grown slightly into also Featherston um, in Wakefield um, um, we really chose those areas because we had some additional capacity and we're doing some additional work because I think one of the things that we've learnt in all of this is that telling people to just open their data doesn't necessarily work um, but where we've got really good existing relationships with community providers and people within communities it's a slightly easier conversation um, to get people to open up, up their data and I would say we are maybe 10 percent through the, the, the journey that we want to be on perhaps I definitely underestimated the time capacity and resource that it would take to do that work within in the communities even with um, development officers that can pick up some of those conversations um, but in Maltby I think is probably where it's worked best so far um, and we've managed to we started off with a bit of a desktop mapping exercise what are all of the community activities or activities across the community that you know that exist and all the partners that you've had conversations with map those out and then had a look at what systems they used. The vast majority of cases, that's none, um, as we would expect. Um, so then we ran a couple of training sessions on how to upload your data via Sports Suite and open sessions, um, because they were the two that we decided were kind of the simplest and easiest to, to signpost people to. And, and Sports Suite just kind of what we've used for a long time and, and pulled that stuff through. Um, and then we got the development officers to kind of sit down with people in the communities and start to open their data and in Maltby um, they've had quite a bit of success using the open sessions tool uh, quite a lot of, of data has been open the finders embedded in the 
what's it called? Active Maltby. Active Maltby, thank you. In the Active Maltby page. Um, and we're hoping now the next set of analytics that we get from Tom uh, will show us. <laughs> Here's my hope, Tom, that there's been a bit of an uptake in the clicking um, and finding of activities using the Active Multi um, widget. Um, but that's very new and kind of has just come into, into play maybe in the last month or so. He's done a lot of that work. So we probably won't see much impact or change for the next the next few months. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's kind of where, where we're at. We're now replicating that and the successes we've had with that, as well as taking some of the learnings into to some of those other areas I mentioned. Bradford's working slightly differently um, because it is through some of the community links already within Living Well. Um, and yeah, Airedale's quite a way along. And then there's a couple of areas that are just starting on kind of the desktop mapping exercise. Um, but we're hoping that, yeah, it will it will work and we'll, people will get access from, from that finder. I think some of the, the challenges have been te technological, um, two twofold. My not, I'll say, not complete understanding of some of the questions that are asked. Um, we've had a lot of people. So um, there's a big organisation across Rotherham, and they said we want to open our data, but we don't want to switch platforms or change or do anything differently. And you're like, well. I'm not quite sure how you're going to get get your data open in that case, um, and it has meant that we've looked a lot into what organisations like Norto Guide are doing, um, and kind of whether data scraping is an option for some of these um, sites where they don't want to swap the system that they're using or do anything differently, but they want the data to be open. Um, we've not not done anything with that yet, but it's something that we're looking into. Um, I guess just the capacity that community organizations have to do the te technology bits on their end as well and upload things to like we think oh it's easy all you've got to do is upload it onto open sessions but actually if they've got to do that for every every group they've got it's a change in, in kind of mind mindset and ways of working for them um which is where the relationship bit and knowing them through other means has been really useful um and like i've said capacity is is a challenge um, and I don't know how we'd ever replicate this across. I think we've got 159 focus middle super output areas across Western South Yorkshire. And if this was to succeed and we wanted to roll that out across all of them, like capacity would definitely be an issue. So there's a, how do we ever scale this up type question in our mind. And then there's just a, a bit of a techno, like technological lack of joined up approach sometimes where we end up with, we think, was the other day wasn't it we thought something was published or open and it was appearing in one place and not in another and i think we kind of were left a little bit baffled with that one um in terms of being able to explain that to um to partners so yeah that's i guess a snapshot of where we're up to if anybody's heard any of that and has an absolute miracle answer please please let us know um <laughs> or if you're kind of experiencing some of the like you know similar challenges it's always good to good to hear as well i think jules is going to say something it's it's i think there's a threshold of data of how accurate it is is holding a few people back because they'll say like uh, we have sessions on a thursday and they'll find they'll put that up there and it'll be on their website and it'll be there but obviously if it's christmas it won't happen and they'll no, next thursday and i can't mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. and actually having someone to go in and edit and manage each individual strand of data I think that's a big ask that will lose an awful lot, which is why I keep going back to the the organisation finder, because at least that way there's a constant presence that you can get to. So I'll just jump in there, um, if that's okay for it, with everyone. <laughs> you got so, a miracle answer, Tom, I'm hoping so. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to disappoint you. I don't, <laughs> don't have a miracle answer. But um, <laughs> might be worth taking the conversation offline, because I've, I've chatted to Dave quite a bit. Uh, um, not a guide about some solutions for um, what we're discussing because I think my reflection on everything is that it's yeah especially for kind of community providers who aren't already using systems like what can we do to help promote those and essentially make the information they've got about them as accessible as possible so um, 
there's some work going on around provider. So similar to what um, Jules recommended about organizers um, and providers could list provider types, which are coach, club coach, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then you can do some pretty cool stuff with essentially a bit of scraping or bit of information, even down to its most simple um, version is a link to their website that the user can go and find out more about them. So it's a, um, we're doing quite a lot of design around how you can have these provider pages and then events are linked to them. And if there's no events, then there's a, like a high, like a few functions, which could be visit website or get in touch or, and also pull data from their existing if they've got any existing web page in such as image and name, or like stuff like that. So that's the bit that we're playing around with. And we've had some pretty interesting use cases. Um, right. As zooming out a little bit more, it's about, yeah, what, because I think basically the problem we're trying to solve is make sport and physical activity more accessible. And that is, I think, over time been more specific towards like, opportunities and events which i completely think still the most important element and that's kind of like the best possible thing because mm. without that it's still a bit of a poor user journey but it's just about kind of understanding where how we can basically make unstructured stuff more structured but that work being done by technology rather than humans is if that all makes sense Mm -hmm. no, that sounds really interesting. It's a bit messy. It's a bit in development still, but um, it'll be useful to understand. Like, for example, do do all of these community providers have a at least a Facebook page or at least an Instagram mm -hmm. account? And if so, if they don't, then I guess it's like what you can't pull it. I always say you can't for all the will in the world ever pull from a piece of paper that they've got like with just scribbled sessions down or something like that. So they have to take some steps towards, but it is just trying to like get as close to, I guess, meeting where they're at as we possibly can. Um, or there might be an answer for taking photographs of posters if you, um, it's kind of if you've explored that bit, but if you want somewhere to try any of that, like the partners in Maltby are very well bought in and it could be a good test area if you wanted one. Yeah, I would say that would be interesting to explore because, uh, and generally going back to what you said, I think it's the right approach. I think like everyone's tempted to scale everything super quickly and like across a whole, like from my perspective, originally it's like there's loads of counties, counties aren't that big, but then from your perspective, there's loads of towns and villages and places in those counties. And then in those places, there's tons of providers. So it, it, scale, it, like, it gets a bit overwhelming pretty quickly when it's in terms of getting like all of the providers sorted but I think things are easier to scale once like even though it feels unscalable in the in the short term like if, if you capture every part as much of it as possible which is like what worked what didn't work what types of providers were pro uh, receptive which weren't that then builds a case that you can help just roll out more widely I think it'd be a good 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 case study Sorry, Jules. No, excellent. Thank you. Uh, Tim, I was, I was going to... Have, is there an audit of system partners or how many of them actually have finders? Uh, no. That would be a great <laughs> idea if some had a spare <laughs> afternoon. Yes. Yeah, no, it's a good, good idea. Um... Took me nine years to think of it. <laughs> Yay, that on back. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Um What's is the it, definition of a system partner, by the yeah, way? Sorry. I was going to say there's 124. A some of them, it might be less appropriate than others. So, Sorry, Tom. Sport England has about 124 system partners. Mm -hmm. uh, a third of them are active partnerships. A third of them are NGBs. And a third of them are national, national organisations like uh, Women in Sport, Activity Alliance. Okay. We, we, we had a meeting about work. language this morning. You could work that out pretty quickly, I think. I can work that out pretty quickly. 
the, if you Google uh, system partner spotting, there's a list of all 120 odd. So that probably give you a, a quick link to work through. Yeah, I think it's under funding on support. However, like if you were to look at our website, we don't have one. So that wouldn't necessarily give you the answer. Yes, we, we don't because we don't have a, a B2C audience. We don't. We'd, it's it's something we'll do as a B2B service to help clubs get active because once they log into our system, then they can put their jobs up there, their, their events and other things. So it's all, and they're on our newsletter list. It's all part of the big data backend that we have. We're not public and facing with a people go do more health and why. We may do that at some point. It's a new website. Uh, Tom, I just had a quick question for you based on what you were saying about the, the work you're doing in terms of uh, mapping kind of providers and things like that. And I was wondering if, I don't know if it might be getting a bit into the technical weeds for, for this call, but if um, you could talk a little bit more about how you're doing that and whether you're using the open active standards, because I, I think um, it'd be good to align these types of conversations, because I know we've been doing some work with Everybody Moves um, around kind of club organization level data and London Sport have also been doing some work in that kind of space as well, sort of mapping club data. So it'd be good to try and make sure we're all on the on the same page with that. Yeah, so it's essentially, we're basically treating it from our system perspective on, and we want to enable like a step one where any organization can create a profile. That okay. profile has a profile picture, a bio, um, the ability to add any links to their socials or website and lo did I say logo? I can't remember. It's not a requirement, a logo. We put a default one if they haven't got a logo, but name, name description and I'm pretty sure I can share with you the specifics, but we're trying to basically minimize the stuff. So like in short, we or our customers can just start listing providers in an area at scale or we can capture that data and automatically list providers at scale and then when they're set up they can be invited to manage a page and if they want to list events or they want to do other stuff then they can but that's like part of the function but it's it's fairly in line it's it, it there's a sub so Provider page is which what we're calling it, but within Open Active, it's essentially organizer. Um, then there's types. The types then dictates what further information we capture from them. So for and it, and then what sport also dictates some downstream stuff. For example, so say if it was a badminton club, so we're doing this originally on a sport by sport basis. So doing it with our badminton and, and golf and cricket and um, working with the NGBs there to kind of get the data they've already got and improve it and then just sort of take that approach across different sports. But the um, say, for example, if the provider type was a club, you might have then sub subsequent club details, which would be like, who is this club for? Like juniors, adults, etc. cetera. Um, do you support, have accessibility support? And it it's all relevant to the type. So what we'll pro or what we were thinking is, is essentially we're running some tests um, in those sports. And once we've kind of got to that point, we'll share, we'll share where we're at in terms of the specific spec, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty common, uh, pretty similar. Okay, cool. So it's fairly aligned to the fields in Open Active in terms of describing an organization. Or yeah, it's just what, what we're building is the ability to edit it. Like, so... Okay. It's all fun and games if we list a load of stuff and then someone goes, oh, I want a different picture. Or I want to record something slightly different. Um, so we need to build the ability for people to view a page, claim that page, and then edit that page. And then that page is, you can add, add more stuff to it and embed stuff in it and stuff like that. Is this going to be a, a, as part of the open standard so other people can download it and also upload theirs like N NGBs will have a club database? We'll publish it all, yeah, yeah, as open data. Once, I think, 
aligned with the open stand. But from my understanding, I think they're still they're not firm. Are they, again, this question: Are they they're not kind of set in stone at this point? Is my understanding for stuff like club data? Yeah, I think that's right. I don't know if Darren, if you want to, because you've been doing a lot of work in this space, if you wanted to come in on that point. Yeah, we are um, this active right now, actually, it's part of the com ongoing conversation with Everybody Moves, that they just wanted some very basic uh, notion of organizer, location, ideally accessibility information and, and a few um, other little bells and whistles. But um, the open access standard as it stands doesn't allow for such a sort of very, very simplistic approach. And not only that, um, but also getting the data uploaded and available. So we we tried to, uh, there's two experiments happening here. One is to actually define that new type, which we just, I've just called it a club type. It's just organizer plus location, basically nothing which involves time. And secondly, um, to allow upload via a simple spreadsheet, which is just hosted on Google Docs. And on top of that, there's a Google form, which then feeds into the, the spreadsheet. So you can just ask a completely non-technical user to say, Okay, just go to this form, fill in some stuff. It'll go to our spreadsheet and our service will read the spreadsheet and chuck it out as an open active compliant um, JSON feed, which um, developers can read into their systems in, in the usual expected way. And uh, the people participating in that process won't be any the wiser. They won't have to dive into the, the details or, or know anything else about it. Um, so that experiment's ongoing. It's, it's been accelerating at pace over the last few weeks, actually. Um, which is really good, um, but yet to be fully locked down in stone. We're still waiting for some opinions on the approach and the content, and we'll take it from there. There was bound to be another AEF session at some point in the near to midterm where we'll rediscuss and take a little bit more of a, a deep dive. There was a session that I um, presented back in January, um, the January mid-January AEF uh, recording. If you had a look at that, that gives a, a little bit of a, a sneak peek at the time of how it stood, that was a spreadsheet approach which used like chained tabs. There was an organizer tab which referenced a location tab, which referenced an image tab and whatever. And that was the kind of step one of flattening the open active structure into a spreadsheet form. And now we flattened it even further. So it's just one tab. And then we went even further and said, well, let's just obscure the spreadsheet from most people anyway, and just ask them to use a, an upload form. Um, that's that side of things. Uh, just touching on what Emma was, saying a little while ago as well this is another little nice to have but we don't yet have any internal capacity to to do this it'll be great if um from the open source tech community if anyone wanted to try their hand at building plugins and widgets for things like facebook wix um regular website building tools drupal etc cetera, etc cetera, um that will allow open active functionality so that anyone that's uh, already using a website based on on these systems, WordPress as well, the big one, I forgot. Um, can They don't have to go away from their, their base website system. They can just grab something, plugs in, and then it all shunks away um, and provides them with the same kind of functionality, but it just plugs into open active land as best as possible. That would be a really good thing to, to, to put together. Um, a really nice project. But uh, as mentioned, we don't yet have the capacity internally um, just putting it out there, uh, and again, we can rediscuss in the future um, and present to the, the community, anyone that wants to get their hands dirty with some tech to, to dive in and try and make a plugin. Nice. So can you see my screen, everyone? Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically, we're using similar functionality to this. This is more because basically why I asked the question before about the link, and it's like, if we've got a link, you can do quite a lot of cool stuff. So you basically put in a link, this is just a badminton club. Um, and then it just pulls quite a lot of detail from here. What we're doing is capturing other, this is just essentially scraped from the website and then applied and then structured in a way that makes sense for brands. But you, we're basically adapting this technology so you can capture as much as makes sense on the website, which is, um, helpful to create these kind of organizer profiles at scale.
Great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Emma. So does that basically mean, I mean, I, I followed most of what you said, Tom. I did get a little bit lost in places, I will say that. Um, but does that basically mean that with this thing that you try in, when we do have organisations that come to us like this one that has in Rotherham, that's got a timetable of information on their website, this will be able to pull that from there and display it in open standards. So it will appear on our activity plan. Well, that's the question. The, the challenge is the structure of what they've got. So what OA, the, the complication is around stuff like timetables and things like that. But what we want to do is have like levels of accuracy, which are either links, so inbuilt widgets into the page, which is see our timetable and then it takes you to the timetable source. Or if it's we just make it look nicer because we can then put the data into standard like a standard form. Um and so in theory, yes, but that's the complex side of it. Um but what we don't want to do is um we just need to accuracy is important and there's kind of you know, like what we're looking at is kind of a bit of a hybrid between like an activity finder or when you look at it more of a so what we just said getting that into the actual opportunities feed will be difficult but showcasing it on like an organizer page a provider page would be possible um just that's that's probably the right way to, to discuss it but yeah it's Yeah, with clubs and stuff, it's about there's still quite a, a use case to help people just discover what clubs are in their area and know what sport they what sport it is, who who it caters for, and even if they say it in a description that we're running junior sessions, you can infer that there's junior and essentially showcase those results if people put in show junior stuff. Great, thanks, Tom. Uh, Paul. Hello, I'll kind of just chip in going back sort to some of Tom point and also Emma's original point. And there's definitely, we've not found a golden ticket, silver bullet to solve this either. We've had exactly the same challenges with getting communities, especially as from everything we know about our audience, it's the community groups that offer sort of a once a week sepia yoga in a village hall that are almost the most valuable sessions to us as an active partnership to get people who are doing nothing to something um, and they're the ones that kind of take the most sales need to actually get them on board to understand open active and why they should be listing and what we're offering and what the activity finder does and all the rest of that package. Generally, we've always found simpler is better. We tend not to talk to them about open active anymore. Um, and have just slimmed it down to look, you can be on our activity finder knowing that if we can get them over that line, at least they're now on open active and they've got open data and they will appear on other people's and it will be good for everyone. But don't complicate it by selling it and just go, yeah, you can be on ours and it's another great advertising platform for you, thanks. Um, the other bit that's been really valuable for that is the fact that we have got the club directory within it. So this is not a plug, we're always Playways. Um, they have built their club finder um, on top of activities. So you've got three layers on the activity finders. So you've got club, activity and venues. And that's been really useful to kind of very quickly build inventory up the places. Or we've had a lot of smaller providers that have been able to offer, they change their sessions every week based on village hall availability or this, that, the other, um, or they're so low. And so they don't trust that they won't be off for a week. And so they've kind of said, well, I'm not willing to put on and manage weekly listings where I'm going to kind of know I'm going to change the knots, but knowing that they can just put a club listing has been really valuable to them. Um, so it's been kind of probably the biggest win for us is actually being able to fill that inventory, especially in the rural areas, has been some level of club finder. Um, and Tom, I know you touched on cricket as an NGB, and we've worked with Lincolnshire cricket locally. Um, and again, something that is a seasonal sport where they only operate spring, summer for a lot of these clubs. Actually, they then lose any sort of promotion through the winter and someone may not choose to get involved with it. So by having that club ability to have that there, all year round has been really beneficial so at least people know what they're going to do in four months time um 
and it's the same summer holidays when listings go down for a couple of weeks because a club stops for six weeks and therefore they don't feel on activity finder someone can still see that there's a place for them to go in september when their kids go back to school they've got somewhere they can go in that time so yeah just kind of a from our point of view it's really valuable and if it become open standard then fantastic um the other bit that kind of links to it from my side on that is do we actually understand what people are looking for in terms of how they're searching and using the activity finders i know this is ultimately it's a it's a played it's a sports week it's a playways question but i don't know if there's anything the odi i can do to go well actually do people care about searching for something that's on wednesday at five o'clock or is that an us thing and do we sometimes overcomplicate it in what people are looking for because i think sometimes it's just that yeah we kind of go right we need all of this information you have to put a time you have to put a session. i know for sessions you need it but if people aren't looking that way and aren't searching that way then we're putting an awful lot of effort into activities when they might actually care more about the providers um, or vice versa so I, I don't know which we should be selling more at the moment it's activities because that's what the data set is um but yeah it was just a kind of question as to does anyone actually understand that journey of what users want and how they're looking at things I think it's a really good point, Paul. I think it's um, it's all, always a good idea to ask those questions, always a good idea to challenge what we think we know, because I do think time's passed now. So it's just about what technology is available or what um, data is available, sorry, and how to best make that accessible. Um, and so, yeah, my view on it's changed slightly where previously I was kind of more... Um, focused on that kind of events or things that people can opportunities um, is probably the right definition but i think the definition of an opportunity can be a lot broader right so it can be like oh there's this club that i can join or it can be oh, i can start having coaching sessions with this coach or i can reach out to this charity that's sp specialized in helping people like me um so I think, yeah, there's there's definitely a okay. I, know, I think just naturally, all of us are always engaged more with the supply side, so the providers and activity based organisations, uh, and like trying to actually spend some time with with actual users and ensuring that they're able to complete a journey that they couldn't used to or didn't used to be able to complete or achieve something that they couldn't used to achieve. Um, I think it's worth worth reframing generally. Um, as And that can, I think starting by that end user experience is, is the right approach. And it's, I think as time passes, you get further and further away from the user. We did consider talking to, uh, what are they called, social prescribers. Mm. And using giving them as kind of directory so they can find people that could who can then lead people through mm. something. That's definitely uh, the best use case, by the way, if you're not doing that already. Like though like actually giving it to people that are promoting people to be active in the community is like um the best. If if you're thinking about what they if someone said, Oh, I need to be active or okay, here's here's all the stuff in your area, here's where you should go. That that's kind of the most likely to help the least active people approach and then giving them a link for them to go and find another stuff in the future um it's obviously at a relatively small scale but i would be doing that um anyway it's been super helpful for quite a few of our customers the challenge with that is and this is where we struggled for ages is it's almost like the chicken and the egg conversation in terms of do you give it to the social like a social prescriber and say use this to signpost people to sport and like sport and physical activity opportunities they go on it try and signpost somebody and there's just nothing available where that person lives or locally brilliant so i think that that's why we ended up going communities up is because we were like we have to make sure there are enough opportunities in the community where people are using it to be able to signpost people to it I mean, I think we, we looked in one district the other week and there was one opportunity across the whole district in that coming week. And we were like, we can't give this 
or use this in the way that we want to yet because the opportunities to signpost people to them just aren't there and I almost feel like sometimes you if you go too early like we have done in the past they then when it is ready and is right aren't interested because they've used it and it's not worked for them before um I think um on that there's a um I'm I'm guilty of this. I do this all the time. It's like wait for stuff to be perfect until it, then you share it with people. But I think like generally, I think if it's about if positioning it with those uh, partners and saying, hey, this is a kind of new new technology that's being rolled out across the sp space. We really want to get feedback from yourselves. It's a tool to help you recommend stuff. If there's not stuff in there, give us feedback. If you position it as like not the finished article, but as a bare partnering with you to help roll that out, then it gives you a bit more kind of leeway in terms of whether there's certain scenarios where there isn't enough activities. Because if you don't do that, they're not kind of helping anyone. I'd rather you better off, say, for example, if I'm looking, I know, for a event to go to at the weekend, I'll go on like timeout or some website like that. There's nothing on there. It doesn't mean that I give up what I'm trying to do. It's just a, a resource for me to find something. And if it's some, sometimes there's stuff on there, sometimes not. But I think if it's a, we got to wait until this is perfect, there's going to be an area where it's not perfect or there's going to be a certain scenario. But generally speaking, it's better than nothing. It's better than what exists already, sorry. And it's already, it's, it's hard to, predict what people learn they could come back and say oh this would be awesome if there was more stuff like this here and then that helps the conversation so I'd, I'd be people people are friendly and if they're not friendly just forget about them uh paul yeah the other bit i'd just say emma is you're not right or wrong because yeah we've definitely done it where i've held off sending it to people because i'm like i know where you're based and i know it's going to be empty if we send you there um but the flip side is I know we've also had providers that have said that they're not going to continue to maintain their accounts or update new activities because they've not seen any increase in traffic. So for the time it took them to add sessions, six months down the road, they didn't feel they had anything from it. So unless we drive people to find their sessions, you were going to end up putting a load of effort into getting clubs on board. And then six months later, they don't renew those because they just don't see the point. So does it make it right or wrong? Still don't know which the right option is, but it's just the other side of the coin. I think one thing I'm hoping for is if we do get all the data up there, then Google will just be able to show it. If you go on Google Maps and you type in hotel, then it'll show you where the hotels are and the prices are because it's tied into that, their kind of open data thing. So Google will obviously ultimately win all the finder arguments as long as they, they know to trust the data. Yeah. Agreed. I think everyone in like that everyone's working with, I think having trying to take them on the journey, be like, look, we're we're working on it. This is like a big change for the industry and like we need people like yourselves to help drive it forward. So I agree with Jules, like kind of what is today is it, it's got to get to the critical mass of a point where it works in most cases. But um yeah, there you go. But Google Maps action. So at least if you search for football, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. It, it'll show you where the clubs are, but it mm. won't uh, because that that's data it can trust. And so there's, there's lots of data there if if people are searching for the organisations. Andrew, I know you've been looking at some of the Google stuff, so I don't know if you want to come in there. And and just as well, um, just for the yeah. benefit of anyone who might be watching the recording. Uh, Jules asked a question about open referral in the chat, which you answered. So I don't know if you want to just touch on that as well, just in case anyone um, on the recording who doesn't have access to the chat. Yeah, that's fine. So on, on the Google piece, um, the Google as part of their Maps platform have a product called Book with Google, uh, also variously known as Reserve with Google. Um, and we had some initial conversations about whether uh, they would be able to integrate the open active data feeds into those services but they've gone very quiet at the moment um their model is more to work with companies that provide booking services 
and to integrate the booking services into Google, where, where it was our approaches to integrate data. Um, so I do have another route to nudge them. Um, I, I know the European Open Data lead at Google quite well. So, you know, if I don't hear back from the, the book with team, I'm going to go in via the Open Data lead because I think they're always talking about how they want to support open data and use open data. And we've got a whole load of it that they could use. Um, that, that could be really interesting. Um, on the open referral thing, um, I don't, Jules's question was, do they have an activity finder? Um, as far as I'm aware, they don't, uh, their focus is very similar to ours in terms of getting data out of and into um, uh, directory systems, um, but they don't actually provide a central finder in the way that we do. Um, <clears throat> And then I think as someone mentioned earlier, uh, integrating open active into kind of the big web platforms, the Facebooks, the Wix, uh, the Metas, uh, all of those sorts of services. I, th I think that could be really interesting. Um, but, but each of those services takes a different approach, which is a little bit, which makes it resource intensive. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, we're just coming to the last five minutes now. Um... Grace or Yasmin, did either of you have anything you wanted to add at all? No problem if you don't, but I just wanted to make sure you had the <laughs> the opportunity to um, to say anything if, if there was anything you wanted to ask or, or talk about. Um, nothing from me. Uh, it's been good to listen to the conversations. Um, but yeah. Great. Um, I agree with quite a lot of what's been said today. Having a club finder would be useful um for us we use our activity finder slightly different to other people because we have um another tool which is a website which is um targeted at inactive people there's lots and lots and lots of information on there but it doesn't come into it do, it just doesn't talk to the activity finder so having a way of uh taking the information from our website and putting it onto the activity finder easily uh, would be really useful for us. That sounds great. And, and how do you get that information on that website? So we have community champions um, across the county um, who have lots of links with activity providers. They upload information to the website and then I look after the website. Um, they uh, it come, sorry, it comes in in all different forms. So some people have like tables of like what they're providing. Some people just have information about the club. Yeah, it's it's all different. So they just have kind of tiles on the community. We have community pages for each area in the county, and they are really well used by the end user. Great, thanks. And you've got some analytics and things that you can measure that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Andrew, did you, I thought I saw you unmute yourself. Were you about to say something or did I miss see that? Uh, no, I've, I've been really quiet on the course today. Uh, uh, and I plan to go and sit in the sunshine and do this meeting didn't immediately start the uh, which was a shame. Um, but I have listened to the whole discussion and I found it really interesting. Um, I, I, I think that point about the kind of top down versus the bottom up approach, you know, I, th I think Emma Jules, you're showing that the kind of bottom up approach can work, but I think we, we need to take a top down approach as well. Um, I think, you know, hopefully we can meet in the middle somewhere. Um, I, th I think the fact that lots of people are thinking about kind of club or organizational level data means that there must be something in that, you know, uh, I, th I think a few people have said they're interested in that today. Um, and it, it makes me think about the adoption path for open active as well so that actually you know when you come to open active at the moment it kind of says publish all your data and actually you know, easy routes to follow to do that so actually maybe it needs to be more steps maybe the first step is to declare your organization existing data and then the next step is to declare where your organization what facilities your organization use and perhaps the last step is to, to declare when um so, so I think we need to think about that, that adoption journey for publishers particularly, but also for data users and data consumers. So actually, a few people said, you know, it can be quite hard to use the data once you found it. So I, I found the conversation really useful today. It was an experiment to have a, an open form discussion, but actually I think it's been quite a useful discussion. Um, 
and uh, there are a couple of things that have come out. I think we should write a big blog post in case of these, um, and we will get in touch with relevant people to victimise you into writing for us. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, really stimulating, really useful. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, we're just coming to the last minute or so. Uh, were there any last points or, or last brainwaves, uh, flashes of inspiration that anyone has? Um, just so, as we do the meeting to close. Sorry, I realised I've talked way too much in this. So apologies, everyone. Um, so just to align, I think I just think if we're looking at a kind of scraping approach, just for kind of basic level information about providers. Uh, in the first instance, would there be, I guess, would an approach work that was kind of creating a bit of a trusted network of of, of partners' websites and clubs' websites that were kind of whitelisted, and then then we could start kind of getting that data out of existing websites without the customer needing to do anything? Um, is that aligned with kind of what people would be? Is it kind of, I guess, the question is having things if we're going to be a bit more unstructured about the data that we're pulling in and then what we're put, putting out um i guess we just need to know say in the example of an activity finder um if we just use yorkshire for example like would uh, how do we originally get the list of providers that were trusted or the list of partners that were trusted to that we could use as data, data sources essentially it's, it's, it's really interesting. Scraping always makes me nervous, Tom. I, I think there are huge ethical questions to answer about scraping. And, but I think actually, you know, using some of the, these data creation tools in collaboration with owners of websites is probably a really good step that we need to take. Um, so we're doing some, we're having some conversations at the moment with the National Trust around routes. Um, and I just had a play this morning using ChatGPT to scan one of their root PDFs and see if it can create a connected data. Um, I'd say it got 70% of the way there, but that's just using a general model. And actually, if we had a customized configured model, it could probably get 95, 98% of the way there. So, so I think there's a real opportunity, but I think, I think you know, we, we shouldn't just go and scrape the web for sport data. We should go and talk to organizations and then use these tools with in collaboration with them so that we get the best quality data. Yeah, I think, and that's probably what I was thinking is kind of getting them to confirm that they're happy for us to capture that data, yeah. whether that's via their partners um, or not. But we've got, I've got some, well, done a lot about kind of utilizing AI to structure unstructured data. It's pretty mad what you can do. So, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to do stuff there. Great. Thanks, Andrew and Tom. I think perhaps that's a, that would be a good topic to, uh, to follow on with a, a future meeting. Um, I think Grace has had to go and it looks like Emma and Jules have been kicked out of their meeting. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're running over time. So I think we might have to end I'm troubled. It's been a um, really good meeting. And I think I've, I've found it really fascinating listening to everyone. And uh, I think perhaps definitely a, a model for the AF that we could use at future meetings as well. I think having a, a mixture of um, you know, sometimes having presenters and people talking specifically and sometimes having these more free form meetings, I think having a mixture of the two uh, could, could be really valuable moving forward. Um, so, yeah, thanks very much, everyone, for joining. Sorry for, for slightly overrunning and uh, great to see you all and I hope to see you all again in a few weeks time at the next meeting.